Some bonds give more returns. Get more security and more interest on your fixed deposits from Sri Lanka's largest finance company, LOLC Finance. And I'm here today to answer living's burning questions. Hi Mimi, welcome to the show and thank you for being with us today. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay, so let's go to our first question. In three words, how would you describe yourself to our viewers and why? Oh, in three words. I guess the first one would have to be empathy because uh, that's what I spend my life looking at. So I would definitely say empathetic, uh, probably quite adventurous because I live here in Sri Lanka and travel the world with my daughter um, and creative because I run a creative agency and I am passionate about creativity. So let's start from the beginning. Could you briefly share with us what brought you to this particular career path? So my father was an ad man and I write a lot about him in my book actually and he gave me two pieces of advice. Um, one of them was don't go into advertising, which obviously I totally ignored because that's exactly where I went. But the second was that if I did, I should start by working with Procter & Gamble as a, as a client. Uh, and that piece of advice I definitely followed. So I followed in his footsteps. I went to London um, very young in my career, very focused on working in advertising um, and went into a graduate placement there with, with a large WPP business at the time and indeed started my advertising career with Procter & Gamble Brands and that led me actually for many years um, into a very sort of corporate advertising career. Fast forward, I have since spent um, 16 years now traveling the world, predominantly in Asia and Africa, really passionate about understanding people, culture and stories in those markets. Um, and that eventually led me to really honing my passion on leadership and of course today looking at empathetic leadership, organisational empathy and what human understanding really means in the workplace. So the career was very much based on creativity and storytelling and today I very much bring that to life through my work in leadership and in, in empathy and, and transformation of businesses and how we use human insight and storytelling to change our businesses. As someone who is passionate about educating others on empathy, could you tell us more about the importance of empathy in the workplace? Empathy is fundamentally an evolutionary skill set. It is actually the backbone to what makes us human. We can't thrive without understanding each other. We are pro-social creatures. There is nobody on the planet that doesn't do better, perform better or feel better when we're connected to others because as people we're not meant to be alone which is why of course the pandemic was so hard on so many people. From an organisational point of view we are our people. Our people are what grow, produce, create the content that builds our businesses. When they are connected to each other, when they understand each other, we're able to see all business metrics increase. In fact, there are very few that don't have hard data now to show that when empathy increases, our businesses grow. And that spans a whole range of KPIs. So output per capita, performance, loyalty, longevity in a company, tenure, even things like absenteeism and sick days that we see go down. Because when empathy is high in an organization, people are able to work together, they're connected, they're able to understand mutual goals. Beyond that, they tend to see higher levels of motivation, wellness and enthusiasm in the workplace. In fact, 79% of people say they would leave their job and their industry, everything they know, in order to find a more empathetic workplace. So that's 80% of people saying that they are more motivated, more content, more able to perform at their best when they're in an organization where they feel seen or heard. So fundamentally, having empathy in the workplace, which is a hard skill set, it is not an emotion, it is a hard skill set that we're able to train and curate and perform with, is able to improve all business metrics across the organization. 
What tips would you give leaders in the workplace on being more understanding with their team? As a leader today, we have so many challenges thrown at us, particularly following the three years that have been sort of in practice since 2020. In terms of understanding, there is one key word, and that is listening. Listening is the fundamental sort of structure to all empathy. To empathize with others is simply to understand them. And some of the organizations that do this best, and I write about this a lot, is organizations like the US Army and the FBI, right? Organizations that are really at the front of very sort of high, um, high stake, high pressure, reality. So when people say to me, you know, oh, I can't be empathetic at work because I'm not soft enough or emotional enough, they have entirely misunderstood what empathy is. So to really empathize, to understand, to take the perspective of others, to see their context, fundamentally comes back to listening, being curious, asking questions, listening more than you speak. There's a lot of data that shows that the higher up we go in an organization, the less empathetic we are. There is no solid data as to why we do that as leaders, but the assumption is because we get so used to hearing our own voices, we become out of practice at hearing others. So my top tips really come back to that, encouraging a listening organization, making people feel heard, ensuring all levels of the business, so a lot of this comes to structure, know that they have a voice, that their opinion matters, and that you're actually listening to what they have to say. What's one lesson being an author has taught you that you think everyone should learn at some point in their life? Becoming an author was a really unexpected journey for me. People often ask me, you know, did you always want to write a book? And the truth is, I feel that the book wrote me rather than the other way around. But what writing the book has taught me is that we are all able to share an opinion with the world that people are open to hearing. I felt that the only people that could write books were kind of academics or John Grisham, you know, best-selling fiction authors. And what I discovered in this process was that when you are passionate about something, when you believe in something, you can share that with the world. In fact, perhaps it's your duty to do so. So a lot of what I've learned in this process is about confidence, is about believing in yourself and knowing that if you have the right structure there, the right belief, this is about positive change, right? You are trying to help the world. Don't shy away from it. Don't think that this is only something that other people can do, but step into your journey, step into your purpose, because in the end, people follow people. And if you are out there trying to create change, trying to build a business or create purpose within an organization that you think can improve others around you, stepping into that is actually what will set you free as well and create you the opportunity to become the leader that you want to be. Being an empathetic leader requires a lot of motivation and self-discipline. Could you give us some insights as to what drives you? When I was about to finish editing this book, we were fully into the pandemic. And I remember my publisher calling me one day and saying, Mimi, are you okay? You know, you're writing this book on your own at home. And I told her that as long as someone, anyone, wrote to me every day during that period and said that they valued or, or were interested in the work that I do, I would keep going. And I think you're absolutely right. To write a book, to be an author, to continue to create content takes a huge amount of patience, of resilience, of tenacity, in fact, to keep going. It can be utterly exhausting, right, for anyone that is trying to create continual content that helps impact the world. But what I've learned in that process is that you just need to find your strength in the people around you. You cannot, you will not ever be able to please everyone. You know, and my mum taught me that at a very young age. Um, and that if you, again, if you believe in what you're doing, finding that resilience to keep going, finding the people who are interested and do find value, and then elevating them into your circle, it's not about numbers, or at least in my case, it's not about numbers, it's about impact. And for every week that I'm able to create content or have a conversation, do a workshop, consult within a business, and those people say thank you, which by the way, I think are probably the two most powerful words that we have available to us. When they say thank you, when they say, you know, this was a value, I find energy to do the whole thing 
all over again. So I think in the end, what I've learned is that it's about finding your tribe, finding the people that value what you're doing, and then not worrying about the sort of barrage of noise that's outside of your focus area. As a podcaster yourself, what podcast channels do you enjoy listening to? My favorite podcast channel is actually Harvard Business Review, and I've been really lucky to appear on there a couple of times as well. Not only because of the content and the thought leadership on there, but also the sort of array of people that they find to bring into that podcast. So you're never sort of hearing things repeat. Um, and it's also, they're not speaking to themselves. You know, some podcasts out there, you can get the feeling after time that they're really just creating content for their own interest, which is not a problem. But what I think with Harvard Business Review is that they have a really global mindset and this ability to find things around the world, thought leadership, topics of interest, leadership areas, that you otherwise would never have found yourself. So I think they curate brilliant content and, and I really enjoy listening to it. So as we begin 2023, what would you like to achieve this year? For me, my goal I think is never gonna change in 2023 and beyond, which is to create more empathy in our world. We have an empathy deficit. That was a term that was first coined by President Obama in 2006. And what it means is that there is a gap between our people, in our businesses, in society, in our community at large. And I am entirely focused on filling that gap little bit by little bit throughout businesses every week for the rest of, for the rest of forever. So, I really want to improve on my ability to achieve that, to work with more businesses, to reach more leaders, to shift more perceptions from thinking that empathy, as I touched on earlier, is perhaps a soft skill or an emotion, and really help educate leaders all around the world and predominantly in Asia, that this is a skill set that our businesses need, but even more so, our people need it. We have to go beyond profit alone and actually focus on our people if we're going to sustain business growth and in our case turn around Sri Lanka right find a way to get back to real growth opportunity for Sri Lanka and all the potential that is ahead next year I'm going to be launching a new book which I can't announce quite yet but is being published out of the region I'm incredibly excited about that um, and it comes with a brand new podcast new name new guests and a new platform um, where we're going to be launching all of our empathy and leadership content online in some form of educational institute that sits on, online um, and allows me to reach more people across Asia and of course Sri Lanka. So I'm very excited, but fundamentally my belief is that the more the world talks about empathy, the more empathy the world will have. And right now, our business world and our wider world needs as much empathy as it can get. of the solution to make your world a better place. Don't litter. Care for your community by disposing waste properly. Refresh Sri Lanka for a civic-minded society in association with AICPA and SIMA, CA, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Sri Lanka and 99X. LMD, the voice of business. Welcome back to the show. So we're going to the segment which is a fun game we have for you and the game we have for you this evening is this or that. Okay. So let's start. Sunny day or cloudy day? Definitely sunny. Cake or ice cream? Oh, cake. Necklace or ring? Necklace. 
No makeup or makeup on? <laughs> Definitely makeup. Swim or run? Swim. Eyeshadow or eyeliner? Ooh, liner. Pizza or burger? Pizza. Wine or beer? Wine. Wine or coffee? Oh, coffee. Texting or calling? Texting. Colourful or monochrome? Ooh, that would depend. Monochrome. Pack light or overpack? Pack light, but I always overpack. <laughs> Lunch in a restaurant or picnic in the park? Mm, lunch in a restaurant. Summer holiday or winter holiday? Winter. Coffee shops or restaurants? Coffee shops. Rooftop views or street views? Street views. Relaxing or exploring? Exploring. Big city or small town? What's Sri Lanka? We're kind of the both. Let's go with small town. Wake up early or sleep in? Hmm, wake up early because I've got a five-year-old. Museum and sites or shopping and coffee? Shopping and coffee. Use a map or walk aimlessly? Oh, Google all the way. <laughs> Use a map. Use public transport or rent a car? Rent a car. Hiking or sun tanning? Sun tanning. Try local food or eat in a fancy restaurant? Local food, always. Explore more of our own country or travel to another country? Mm, explore more of this one. Tropical destinations or northern lights? Tropics, tropical. Bungee jumping or scuba diving? Oh my gosh, neither. <laughs> lose your phone or lose your wallet? <sighs> phone. Have one close friend or have many friends? Mm, many. Be a celebrity or meet your favorite celebrity? Oh, that's tough. Be. Be a celebrity. Have no car or have no house? No car. Have 10 pets or have 10 kids? Oh, 10 pets. <laughs> be a mind reader or be able to be invisible? Oh, invisible. Unlimited free clothes or unlimited free food? Unlimited clothes. Would you be able to fly for one day or be completely invisible for one day? Uh, to be invisible. I would love that. Never use social media again or never watch another movie or TV show? Oh, never watch another movie. Always be surrounded by annoying people. Be alone for the rest of your life. Ah, be surrounded by annoying people. <laughs> have a head the size of a watermelon or have a head the size of a tennis ball? <laughs> um, a watermelon. <laughs> never be able to take an airplane again or never have internet access again? Oh, never take a plane. Be a wizard or be a vampire? A wizard. Read minds or see the future? Oh, see the future. Have super hearing or have extra vision? Mm, extra vision. Be able to fly or run at super speed? Fly. Be able to teleport or be able to travel time? Oh, time travel. Eat only desert or eat only savory? Eat only savory, always. <laughs> speak many languages or able to speak to animals? Oh, both would be fun. Speak many languages. Always be winter or always be summer. Always be summer. All right, we have come to the end of the game. Thank, Thank you very you. much. <laughs> Those are my answers to the burning questions and the game. Be sure to follow Living's Facebook and Instagram pages for more episodes of Living Gets Real.